So I'll get straight into it this morning. Um, it's really lovely when we talk each week about our de- weekly devotions. And uh, today's message kind of comes out of my own challenge to get more consistent with devotions. Uh, last year, I was challenged in my own time to just be consistent each morning with actually opening my Bible and reading the Word. And so I decided to start in Matthew. And uh, for me, I started using a method called the SOAP method. So I don't know if anyone knows that method, but it's working really well for me. And this verse verse came out of that and just a few thoughts out of it. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning. So the verse I'm going to read is Matthew chapter 24 and it's, Keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. In this passage in Matthew 24, the homeowner is preparing for an unpleasant thing to happen. But Jesus asked us to put the same amount of energy into preparing for something that's far more wonderful, but equally unpredictable, the return of the Son of Man, Jesus. I'm curious to know how many people here have ever had their house broken into. Anyone here had their house broken into? A number of us. Uh, Many years ago, we were house-sitting on the south side of Canberra. That's that place that's about 30 minutes' drive from here. Feels like another world for us who live on the north side of Canberra. And I came home one day to find that someone had broken into our home. Uh, We were only fairly newly married. It was a fairly scary feeling to come home and find things out of place and and trying to work out if someone was still in the house. Uh, But some of our valuables were stolen in that that, uh, break-in. Prior to that, I hadn't really given much thought to security measures aside from locking the door as I left the house each day. Uh, We weren't really in a position to pay to get a security system put in because it wasn't our home and we couldn't make any alterations to the house to make sure it was safer in a lot of ways. But after that incident, we went straight out to Dick Smith, uh, bought one of those blue light um, things, glued it to the uh, outside thing so it looked like we had a security system, put up a sticker that said this house is protected, um, even though it wasn't. Um, but really it was a little bit too late. Um, you know, burglars are very opportunistic and they often look for people who aren't prepared and have left themselves vulnerable. It could be a door or a window that you've left unlocked. It can be that you live in a quiet neighbourhood where people don't come and co- go very often. It can be signs that people have gone away. It brought to mind a well-known old movie, Home Alone. I don't know who knows that movie and I really wanted to show one or two clips but not supposed to so you just have to imagine it if you've seen it and you might recall the scenes that I talk about. So in that movie, Kevin McAllister is an eight-year-old boy who accidentally gets left home by himself when his family heads off on an overseas holiday. When I read this passage in Matthew, I started thinking about the measures Kevin took to protect himself against two burglars named Harry and Marv, who were looking for opportunities to get rich quick in a wealthy part of town over the Christmas holidays, a time when a lot of people go away. It also reminded me of Linda's message last week when she talked about the conversation that took place between God and Satan, who were both vying for Job's attention and for his heart. For some people listening today, Jesus may still be standing outside the door of your heart, hoping you'll invite him in. He does want to have a relationship with you. For all of us, there is also an enemy looking for opportunities to get into our lives, our thoughts, our hearts and our relationships. If nothing else, today's message might encourage us to put some security measures in place for our homes, but I do hope that it does more than that. I hope that it challenges us all to put security measures in place for our lives and our hearts, that we decide we want to be better prepared for when Jesus returns. So the first security tip I picked up from Kevin and Home Alone was to leave a light on. We need to make sure our faith can be seen by others. A lot of homes have sensor lights that come on automatically when someone approaches our homes. We can set timers that make lights come on even when we're out. And many people have a nightlight in their children's bedrooms or in a hallway to help them feel safe and find their way to the bathroom in the dark. So when we apply this principle to our faith, we can ask ourselves a few questions. What is our automatic reaction when we're faced with challenging situations? 
What behaviours do we turn on and off depending on who we're around? How is our behaviour on the sporting field? Not that I can speak from sporting field experience, but how is our behaviour on the sporting field, in the workplace, or when we're around our unsaved friends and family? What do people actually see and hear when they're around us? Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16 says, You, or we, are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. If you've seen Home Alone, you may remember the party scene where Kevin turns all the lights on in the house, he cranks up the music and he uses mannequins and cardboard cutouts rigged up to train sets, record players, strings and all sorts of things to create shadows and movement in the windows. When Harry and Marv pull up out the front of the house, it looks like there's a lot of people inside having a party, so they drive off and wait for another opportunity. As well as having the lights on, it's all imp also important for us to show there's activity and people in the house. When people plan to go away, particularly for an extended length of time, they sometimes arrange for a house sitter to come and look, and look after the house. You know, we might do things like leave a car in the driveway, ask a neighbour to collect the mail, take the bins out or water the garden so it looks like someone is home. We have lovely neighbours who live across the road from us, an elderly couple who are in their 80s, and they keep a very close eye on our house. So close, in fact, that they presented us with four photos on the, of the front of our house one time when we returned from a month being away, just to, so they could show us how the autumn leaves had changed beautifully over the four weeks that we'd been on holidays. Maybe your neighbours aren't quite that interested in what happens at the front of your house, but ours were. They pay attention to a lot of our comings and goings and sometimes message us if something out of the ordinary happens. Just a few weeks ago, they noticed that none of our cars had got, come or gone from the house for a couple of days and messaged to ask if we were in isolation and if we were okay. They know our general activities and the patterns of behaviour and they care enough to check if there's something that's completely out of character for our family. When it comes to our spiritual lives, what do we do to show the enemy that we're active in our faith? Does he see a quiet, empty house when he looks into our lives or a heart that has a party going on inside? Does the enemy see us engaging in praise and worship both on Sunday and during the week? Does he see us reading our Bible or spending time talking to God through prayer? Does he see us connecting with community of believers on Sundays and in life groups? Does he see us deepening our faith through studying his word, either in devotions like we've already talked about this morning, reading books, or you can even do something like join our certificate for a ministry that we do through Alpha Crucis? Does he see us using our gifts and talents to bless and serve others? Colossians chapter 1 verse 28 says, So we continue to tell people about Christ, we use all wisdom to counsel every person and teach every person. We are trying to bring everyone before God as people who have grown to be spiritually mature in Christ. To do this, I work and struggle using the great strength that Christ gives me. That strength is working in my life. Our faith isn't a set and forget arrangement. We don't put our hand up once and say yes to Jesus and then go on with the rest of our life. It's not a Sunday habit that passes from one generation to the next. For some of us, like myself, it can be easy to just turn up on Sunday because our parents did it and our grandparents did it. It just becomes a part of our rhythm of life, something that we're used to doing. Our faith is meant to be an active, growing, deepening relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in community with other believers and it's also meant to be part of our everyday life. We don't need to try and take a huge leap and start doing all of these things all at once because that's definitely not a recipe for success. A good question to ask is, what is my next step to keep actively growing in my faith? 
Every Sunday we have someone from our Next Steps team in the foyer before the service and in the cafe area after the service. It's the same place where you go to sign up for the welcome lunch if you want to do that. Um, today we have Richard up there. So if this is something that you want to do or find out what your next step could be, feel free to go and talk to someone after the service or any Sunday you can do that and we can help you. We have a next steps lunch that happens the week after the welcome lunch and it's a great way just to find out a bit more about your personality, your spiritual gifts and how you might want to use those to get involved. The third important home security tip is to secure entry points. In Home Alone, Kevin goes to extraordinary lengths to set booby traps that slow the burglars down and stop them getting into his house. This is probably the main feature of the movie, so if you haven't seen it, it's well worth a watch. Uh, he does things to the windows, the doors, the stairs, anywhere that he can to slow them down and stop them. He takes every entry point into consideration, anything that would give them access, and he finds a way to keep them at bay. At times, they do make it into the house, but he still continues to set booby traps and to keep them blocked from making, gaining ground and getting to where they want to go. And ultimately, he does have the victory. In the same way, we need to be aware of the areas in our lives that are easy access points for the enemy to get into our thoughts, our attitudes and our lifestyle. What affects our peace, our joy, our relationships with people and with God? How do things like anger, Busyness, tiredness, depression, anxiety, pride, fear or control get a foothold in our thinking and our behaviour. We all need to consider who are the most influential people in our lives and whether they are positive or negative influences on us. Jim Rohn, who's a motivational speaker, is famously quoted as saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And that's certainly something to think about who it is that we spend the most time with and what effect they have on our lives. Take a moment to consider what could help you secure the entry points in your life. It will be different for all of us. If you have addictive behaviours, you may need to get professional help or at least commit to a mentoring relationship with someone who will be caring but will also keep you accountable. If you feel emotionally or spiritually trapped by things that have happened in your past, you may decide to do the freedom course that we offer here through your life college. If your interactions with your spouse or your children are causing the breakdown of communications or relationships, you might decide the parenting or the marriage course would help steer things in a more positive direction. Or for those with more complex situations, there's great value in seeking professional counselling. If your relationship with money causes you anxiety or tension, maybe the cap money, money course can help you get back in control of that. If the things you believe about yourself cause you to feel depressed or negative, get into God's word and find some truths that help turn your thinking around. When I was a young girl, I had a lot of trouble with self-esteem and it still raises its head every now and again. But my dad, I vividly recall him um, making me say Psalm 139 verse 14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He made me say it through tears. He made me say it out loud. He made me stand up and say it with confidence. He made me say it over and over again to counteract the negative voices in my head and to help me ground my thinking in the truth of God's word and not let those lies rule my thinking and my attitudes. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. The final piece of advice I want to share about protecting both our physical homes and our spiritual lives may seem a little bit strange, but it is to warn your neighbours. Recently, our neighbours came over to let us know their car had been broken into. They didn't tell us this because they just wanted us to feel sorry for them. 
They care enough about us that they wanted us to be alert and prepared so the same thing didn't happen to us. In the same way, in Home Alone, Kevin started to build some points of connection with the shopkeeper, with the neighbour and the police, who asked questions, challenged things sometimes and looked out for him. What I've realised through my own faith journey is that it's not just about me and what I get out of church, but also what I contribute to the lives of others. Online church has provided a fantastic opportunity for people who may not be able to attend church in person on Sunday, but those deeper personal connections come through getting involved in a life group, joining a serve team or coming along to other events. A Christian without a church family is a spiritual orphan. And John Wesley says, there is nothing more unchristian than a solitary Christian. It's through relationship that we receive and also give some very important things. Encouragement to keep growing in our faith. Hope amidst challenging circumstances. Generous acts of kindness. Wise counsel and prayer during difficult seasons. And accountability for areas of vulnerability. I'm always inspired during times of emergency, and we've seen this just recently during the floods, to see those who make their own property safe and then go down the street to their neighbours' houses to help them put measures in place to protect their property as well. These people have such a strong sense of looking out for and protecting their whole community. I love this verse in 2 Peter chapter 3 because it says, God isn't late with his promise as some measure lateness. He is restraining himself on account of you, holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space and time to change. God's desire is that none should perish. It's important for us to look out for and invest into the lives of our neighbours, our friends, family and work colleagues. God's desire is that none of us should be left behind. Bill Hybels once wrote a book called Just Walk Across the Room. It was encouraging to me as someone who is more introverted. You may not think that standing up here speaking, but I am very introverted. Um, But he was really encouraging because he said not everyone's going to be that big evangelist that's speaking to crowds and leading lots of people to Jesus. But he challenged us that our conversation, our friendship, our generosity or our kind gesture might move someone a step closer to knowing who Jesus is and wanting a relationship with him. Our hearts are like a house with a door. We can choose what we welcome in and what we try to keep out. If you know Jesus is currently standing outside the door of your life, he will wait there patiently until you choose to let him come in. He's never forceful, but please know that he loves you and he is interested in getting to know you and being a part of your life. He knows there's an enemy on the prowl and he wants to help you find forgiveness freedom, peace and joy. I don't know about you, but when I picture Jesus, I see him sitting in a comfortable chair in the lounge room of my heart, having a relaxed chat with me over a cup of tea. If an intruder tries to enter my life, he's there with me to help make a plan and defend that special place he has in my life. John chapter 3 verse 16 is such a well-known verse, but it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. God sent His Son not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him.